Another day, another red day for the stock market, ladies and gentlemen. It's about 1.40 p.m. on the East Coast right now. We have the S&P 500 down 0.8%. The Russell's down 0.6%. We have the NASDAQ down 1.2% as the Dow is down about half a percent. And the good old VIX, the mighty old VIX is up five and a half percent so we're going to break down the markets in this video as always talk about some trending stocks and of course go over what i'm doing in the market so sit back relax take a sip of your coffee and let's get into the video guys and by the way yesterday i had a freaking brain fart in the intro of the video last night on sunday i was like we have the markets tomorrow or, uh, even though the markets are closed tomorrow we're still going to make this video yada 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 i'm a freaking idiot it's a fe it's a federal holiday so i thought Oh, markets are closed, right? But the markets are clearly open. So sorry for that brain fart, guys. It happens to, to me. It happens to me more than you guys think. Sometimes I edit it out, but whatever. And in, in, in this video, we're going to get into the markets and talk about what's going on. So let's do that right now. Again, everything is down in a major way. We have the VIX up pretty nicely right now. Uh, well, I guess... I mean, it, <laughs> well, I don't want to say pretty nicely, like it's a good thing. Uh, but the VIX is up. Either way, whatever way you're, look, uh, you're looking at it, gold is down 2%, silver is down about 3%, and we have a lot of movers. So we got to just dive right into it, uh, starting off here with SPY, which you guys can see on the intraday chart, started off right in the beginning, uh, beginning of the day, selling off, right? We rallied in the pre-market a little bit, which I guess more than a little bit. I mean, from 360 to 364, this thing ran up 1.2% pre-market from the bottom to the top, which was nice. But the second the markets opened, SPY, Triple Q, everything pretty much started dumping. This thing went from 364 and a half down to about 357 as of just 20, 30 minutes prior to me filming this video. You guys can see that is a drop of about one8 Almost 2% there from, uh, you know, the opening to where it uh, ended up going to the low of the day, at least the low of the day as of now, which on SPY again is 357. And from that point, we have seen a little bit of a rally, but really nothing much, nothing crazy. It's just a relief rally. And like you all can see here, we saw plenty of those earlier today and all of them ended up being bull traps. Bears came in, knocked it down. And we hit a fresh low. We've hit fresh lows every time we've seen rallies throughout the course of the day. And that's the same thing here on Triple Q. Let's pull that up. Let me show you guys. Triple Q is at 265 now. It hit 263.5 earlier in the day. That's a drop of about 2.2% from opening price, roughly 270, to again the low of the day. And if you all look here on the four-hour chart, look at this. We took the lows out. We took the lows out from last week or maybe the week before that, but whatever, the beginning of October, the lows from that point were 265. So Triple Q, last week, it started running. It got all the way up to 285-ish, and just like that, it took the lows out. These are the types of markets that we're in, guys, and you got to realize, and I say this all the time, I try to make you all aware, and I try to hammer it in my own head that we're in a bear market, and every rally that we get, we always have to keep in the back of our minds that, historically statistically speaking it could it's it's most likely a bear market rally you know i don't have the exact number on that but we've covered this in videos before where i broke down the previous bear markets and we've seen throughout the previous bear markets a ton we've seen a ton of bear market rallies within them and i forget there, there's a specific number i forget percentage wise but a lot of the rallies end up being um, you know, bull traps, right? Bear market rallies, in other words. And that's how I view it. And I'm being completely open and trying to get you guys to realize that as well, because every time we get a rally, it seems like um, a lot of people get super excited, you know, within this bear market. They think, oh, the rally, here it is. And, and you know, we've called out the relief rallies in the past on the channel. You guys know. But again, we're, we're super open here. You know, we're super just, just keeping it real and, and just being honest. Like, hey, we're seeing a nice rally here. The green's great, but realize it's probably not going to last, um, you know, just judging off of previous bear markets. And you may ask yourself, well, Stas, at some point, it's going to be a legit rally, which you're right. At some point it will. And that is why you got a dollar cost average. You have to dollar cost average, at least if you're looking long term. And if you want to just buy an index fund, which I do with, with some of my money, right? I buy VOO, I buy VXUS, things like that. I just dollar cost average if I'm looking long term, which I am with those two that I mentioned. 
And that way, I don't have to be like, all right, is this a bear trap? Is this this? Is this that? Is this the bottom? Or are we breaking out? I don't care. I just average, and it just makes life simpler, dollar cost averaging down, and I'm sure a lot of you all can relate to that. Now, when it comes to trading, it's a little bit different. We're not going to get into that in this video, but you know what I mean. So at this point, Triple Q took the lows out. SPY is pretty much right there. It didn't take the lows out yet, but it's about four or five bucks away, and it could hit whether it's later today, some point later this week. It is totally in the cars. And if we pull up oil, let's see what oil is up to right now. Um, it's pretty flat, you know, right around 92 a barrel. If you guys don't know or you didn't know, oil is up from 76 a barrel just 10 days ago. Not even, actually more like two weeks ago at this point. Um, and that's a, a move of over 20% to the upside. Freaking insane. And I think oil... I mean, if it takes out 100, I've said it before, I'll say it again, there's going to be a lot of upside on oil in the short term, in my opinion, from that point. You know, that could be where it really starts uh, ripping, and there's a lot of catalysts for that. I mean, OPEX gun production, we've covered that in a previous video, 2 million barrels of oil per day starting soon here, and that's really, you know, that, that that's really going to put upwards pressure, um, you know, on on oil, you know, especially with, with, with what we're seeing now with inflation, you know, just the economy, really, it's in a technical recession, but people argue it's not. But I think, I mean, it is if you look at the technical definition, and it's probably going to get worse. So there's a lot of moving parts. It's probably going to get worse before it gets better. So, yeah, what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. And if you haven't gotten your 15 stocks for Moomoo yet, it's free money. Use that link down below. Simply deposit at least 100 bucks, and you could get up to 15 stocks, each up to 2000 bucks. And if you want 12 stocks from Weeble, also, link down below, deposit any amount of money, and you get 12 stocks. It's free money, and it also helps out the channel. Guys, I appreciate you all, as always. Cheers. And with that being said, let's talk about some stocks. So we had some automakers today get downgraded. Ford is number one, which is down 6.75%. And this makes complete sense to me. If you guys look at the last recession we had, car companies did not do well, did not do well at all. And maybe we should do a video solely on this and maybe do a little history lesson, but yeah, they did not do well. And now that we're in a recession again, it probably is going to get worse before it gets better. I'm thinking Ford, I don't know if it's going to go bankrupt. I mean, some people think they're going to go bankrupt Ford, GM, I don't know. GM got downgraded as well, by the way, guys, it's down 4.4%. I don't know if they're going to go bankrupt, but in, in this recession, the deeper we get into it, all I know for sure is the stock prices are going to come down. I think Ford is really going to start getting under $10 here in the next couple of months. My bet, and mind you, Ford's a stock that I've wanted to buy for quite some time. I've never really done it, but my bet is that in the coming months, I could be wrong. I, I've been wrong before on Ford, and I've missed out on entry points, but I think we go under 10 That's what I'm trying to get at here. And, you know, the next couple of months, we have earnings coming up here on the 26th, just about two weeks from now. Hopefully they bomb on those earnings. I'm sorry, guys, if you have Ford stock, uh, I hope you do well, super long term. But in the short term here, your boy Stotts needs to get a position. So I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping for completely bombs earnings and I'll be able to get get it at eight dollars, maybe under that. Who knows? In the next couple of months, definitely possible. So looks like here. Uh, RBC cut the price target on Ford from uh, 15 to $13. They maintain a sector perform rating. What else? Uh, did anyone else? UBS is oversupply problems. Oh, Ford said, or uh, Ford stock is now a sell at UBS. So, I mean, guys, this thing is probably coming under uh, $10. That's my bet. And, and I could be wrong. It's currently at 1140. It's down six and a half percent, but. I'm banking on it. I'm waiting on it. And, and if it happens, I will be buying some Ford. Um, really, I'm looking to buy it at the eight, eight ish dollar, eight and a half dollar range. We'll see if it gets all the way down there. But again, I feel like there's a chance it does. And GM is not one that I'm looking to really buy, but I'm still tracking it. This thing is down in the past couple of weeks from 42 bucks. Now it's at 32 bucks, 25% down move. And if I pull up the three year chart, you guys can see. It is down even more than that from the beginning of this year. In the beginning of this year, it was 67 bucks. Now it's at 32. Do the math, guys. It is down over 50 percent. And I think I saw something on Rivian. Let's pull Rivian up. Rivian's down nine percent. What was it again? It's slipping my mind here. Uh, Rivian, 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 Rivian. Uh, outperform rating by RBC. They trimmed the price target though from uh, 62 to 61. I mean, oh, okay, big. 
uh, price trim there. And oh, here it is. That's right. Rivian Automotive is recalling 13,000 vehicles to address a safety issue. That might be a video in and of itself, like the car market video or uh, the car automotive video I mentioned earlier about 4GM. Maybe we'll do a history lesson uh, video on those. This might be another topic as well, Rid uh, Rivian. Uh, maybe I'll make a short form video on that or maybe a TikTok. Make sure to go follow me on TikTok, guys, at Stossurfest and on Instagram at Stossurfest. I'm posting short uh, short form videos there pretty much every day at this point. So if you guys want to see that type of content, at Stossurfest, TikTok, and Instagram. So yeah, this is what's really setting the stock down. 13,000 vehicles for a company that really isn't producing a crap ton of vehicles, delivering a bunch of vehicles. That is pretty, pretty uh, big, big news, I'd say. And let's see how Tesla's reacting. Uh, Tesla's up on the day. I don't know if it's uh, because of that. Probably not. But um, let's see. Morgan Stanley makes Tesla prediction for 2023. Cuts price target as production headwinds linger. Tesla BYD break China delivery records as EV vi uh, rivalry goes global. That's another one that, guys, you got to realize, BYD is a huge competitor to Tesla, and I don't think people are realizing this. I made a t uh, short-form video on this a couple of weeks ago, I think, um, and we, we talked about it. This thing is super competitive. It's going to be super competitive to Tesla in China, and I think they actually sold more vehicles than Tesla, I believe, in China. I forget the exact number. Uh, I, again, I got to go look back into my notes, but BYD is a force. Let me tell you that, guys. Is this even it? This is, um, yeah, either way. Wait, this is not BYD. Yeah, this is not BYD. This is Boyd Gaming. <laughs> I forget the ticker symbol for BYD. I thought that I thought the ticker would be BYD. That's my mistake. Another brain fart for uh, for me today, guys. Uh, but whatever, whatever stock, whatever the ticker is, I forget what it is. BYD. You gotta watch it. The Chinese um, EV maker, right? So with that being said, I'm going to wrap the video up, guys. If you enjoyed it, you know what to do. Hit that like button. Feel free to subscribe. And check out my Patreon if you guys want exclusive morning videos, me breaking down the markets. You want all my real-time moves, call-outs, exclusive content. All that is on Patreon linked right down below. And make sure to also get your 15 free stocks from Moomoo Moo and your 12 stocks from Weeble. Guess what? Those are also linked down below. And with that being said, cheers, guys. I will catch you in the next video. Peace out.